10 on Sports Central, we're going over a culture while game preview and prediction on one of the big SEC matchups coming up in week nine of this 2020 season. And that's going to be between the Florida Gators and the Missouri Tigers. And this is an important game for many reasons. I mean, you got four on one side. They've not played a game in three weeks from Saturday. The last time they played a game was on October 10th when they lost to Texas A&M. So it's been a while for Florida. Obviously, they've had a couple of games be postponed due to COVID positive. So they've been out for a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, on the Missouri side, they're getting some momentum. Of course, they've won two games in a row, and this is going to be an important game in the process and probably their biggest test in a couple of games and in a couple of weeks for Missouri. So this is going to be an important game for both teams moving forward and seeing who is going to be a better team overall this season. So we're going to be going over a full preview and prediction on this game here today, starting out with your team trends. In the last game, Florida lost to Texas A&M once again. 38-41 to was the final score there. And yeah, Texas A&M obviously is a pretty good team this season, so I wouldn't consider that to be a bad loss by any means. I mean, they kept it really close, and it was a close game throughout the entire thing, but still a loss is a loss, and so that's definitely going to be um, a loss that could hurt them as we get towards the later parts of the season. But as for Missouri, they beat Kentucky last week. 20-10 um, to 10 was the final score there, so they did beat them in that matchup. But yeah, your winning streak to both these teams. Ford is on a one-game losing streak after losing to Texas A&M a few weeks back. They're 2-1 and one, and also the 10th-ranked team in the country right now. And as for Missouri, they're 2-2. Two and two. They won two games in a row, and they're really not looking terrible right now. I mean, they did have a good win against Kentucky once again. 20-10 uh, was the final score there in their previous game. So all around, Missouri has definitely improved a lot so far this season. This is a Missouri team that I definitely think should not be slept on by anyone right now. This game's going to be on Saturday, October 31st, 7.30 p.m. Eastern in Gainesville, Florida. So Florida will be the home team for this one, and it will be in the swamp, which is kind of bad news for Missouri, even though we're not really seeing many fans in the stands. It's still a tough place to play. So, yeah, Florida is favored by 13.5 here. ESPN FBI has also got Florida 88%. Then your Vegas prediction is also on the Florida side by 16 points. 33-17 to 17 is the final score that they're predicting there right now. So the spread, actually, I mean, if you think about it, 13.5, on the spread it's it i mean it's a significant spread towards florida but really is not much of a blowout type of spread i mean for example a couple of weeks ago we saw uh what was it i think it was clemson and georgia tech i mean clemson was favored by like 35 in that matchup heading into that one uh give or take so i mean it's i mean yeah you get my point florida is not favored by a whole lot in this matchup going up against missouri Here's a stat comparison for this one. Florida's got 42 points per game, 33 points allowed. They've also got 342 pass yards a game, 122 rush yards. And then for yards allowed, they got 331 pass yards, then 164 rush yards. So as far as it goes for the Florida offense, I mean, Kyle Trask, and I've talked about him time and time again. You guys have heard uh, my take on him several times in the past. I think Kyle Trask is easily one of the most underrated quarterbacks in all of Cobalt Trueball. I mean, I mean, if you look at his stats from last season and how well he's played so far this season, I mean, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty awesome what he's been able to do. And also considering, I mean, once again, last season, he wasn't even expected to play. Felipe Franks was ahead of him before he got injured. So, yeah, Kyle Trask, considering the circumstances, he's played very well so far. And I think if Florida can get some big wins down the stretch, if they can be a national contender, you could easily see Kyle Trask in the Heisman talk for this season. I mean, it's definitely possible at this point uh, with 342 average pass yards a game. They also got 122 rush yards a game, and then once again for yards allowed, they allow 331 pass yards, then 164 rush yards a game. So the defensive side for Florida definitely needs to be something that is imp that needs to be improved. I mean, if Florida is going to be a national contender, you can't allow 330 pass yards a game. I mean, that's just not going to be uh, something that you can do. I mean, again, when you're playing up against teams like Alabama, I mean, they will run all over you if, they're, if you're allowing uh, 330 yards of passing to mediocre teams. And so for Florida, uh, yeah, that's something that you definitely need to improve. And this is a game where um, I definitely think that needs to be improved if they're going to get a win. As for Missouri, they got 24 points per game, 31 points allowed. So they do allow seven more points per game on average than they get. Uh, they also have 269 pass yards a game, 148 rush yards, and 242 pass yards allowed, 122 rush yards allowed. So... As far as it goes for the passing game for Missouri as well, they've actually been doing pretty well there with 270 average pass yards a game. Uh, but on the defensive side, I mean, you do have to improve your uh, your secondary as well considering you've got 240 pass yards a game. But the rush defense for Missouri honestly has not been all that terrible so far. 122 average rush yards is not a terrible number. I mean, if you can keep that under 100, that is definitely the most ideal thing, but still 122 is not that bad. As for the games that both teams have played, Florida did lose to Texas A&M a couple of weeks back, 
30 to 41 was the final score there. And Texas A&M, I do consider to be a top 10 team right now. So um, that is honestly not that terrible of a loss there. They did beat South Carolina the week before, 38 to 24. And they also beat Ole Miss 51 to 35. And there's your defensive numbers once again. I mean, if you're Florida, you can't be allowing Ole Miss to score 35 points and Texas A&M uh, to score 41 points on you if you're expecting to be a national contender this season. And so once again, that's something that they did, they definitely have to improve moving forward. But as far as it goes for Missouri, they beat Kentucky 20 to 10. Also had a big win against LSU 45 to 41. And obviously that big LSU game was considered a huge upset at the time, but LSU has definitely not been playing very well at all. So, I mean, a win's a win, but yeah, just kind of something to consider there. They did take a loss to Tennessee 12 to 35, which that loss now looks terrible considering how Tennessee has been the past couple of weeks. And they also lost to Alabama 19 to 38. As far as it goes for your key points, Florida still has a ton of potential in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of season left for this Florida team. There's a lot of big, significant uh, games that they have to win still. But I still think Florida can be a college football playoff team. Uh, it's just going to be much more difficult considering they did lose to Texas A&M. But yeah, this is definitely going to be a must-win game for the Gators if they're wanting to make it to a bowl game. Or not a bowl game, to the college football playoff. Missouri has had a couple of good wins and is gaining momentum as well. That's good for the Tigers right now. Um, obviously, momentum is all um, all you need in college football. If you've got good momentum, that's going to lead you all the way through your season. And, yeah, for Missouri right now, they're actually gaining quite a bit. I mean, you got to win against LSU. And then last week, you also got to win. So that is something that you do have to consider there. So Missouri is coming into this game as one of the more, I would say, hot teams of the SEC right now. However, Florida has not played since October 10th, and that could either be – a huge detrimental thing for them or that could actually benefit them at the same time i mean if you've got injuries that's going to give your guys a ton of time to heal up but on the flip side i mean you've been played in three weeks i mean that having a break like that in the middle of the season could be very detrimental to florida in this circumstance i mean it's going to cause you to be a little bit rusty especially in the early parts of the game and considering missouri has had uh, some more playing time and they've been more consistent with their playing time that could be also a big bright spot for Missouri as well. So watch out for that in this matchup. I mean, once again, when you have a three-week bye, or yeah, when you have three weeks off, I mean, that could be that could be possibly kind of detrimental to Florida's chances of winning this game. But I still think Florida gets the win in the end. Here's my score prediction for this one. I've got Florida winning it, 34 to 17. So I think I think Florida's going to win it pretty comfortably. But Missouri will keep it close in the first half. I think we're going to see kind of a scary first half for the Gators. Your halftime score is going to be 17 to 10. Florida will lead at the half. But I think in the final, even though Florida is coming off of a three-week bye, 34 to 17 is going to be your final score here. Florida is going to end up getting the win in the end over the Missouri Tigers. I think it's going to be a little bit close. But once we get into the fourth quarter, uh, once again, I expect Florida to pull away and get a pretty good win by 17 points. Will be uh, your will will be your final score with Florida winning it. Uh, by 17 but do let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this matchup let me know your score predictions game predictions etc i'd like to hear your thoughts on that but then again thanks again for watching if you enjoyed this preview slap a like on it subscribe as well it really helps out the channel i'd really appreciate that but as always thanks again for watching stay tuned for more from all sports central and i'll catch you all in the next one